Hi everyone, nice to have you here. Um, today we're going to be doing a full face of pretty darn new makeup. These are some products I've been playing with a little bit, but I'm continuing to sort of analyze how they wear and exactly what the experience is like putting them on. With some things, it takes me quite a few tries to really put my finger on, like, do I really like this or how is this working exactly? So as I put my makeup on today, I thought I'd turn on the camera and bring you along for the ride. One of the new things that I got, okay, Too Faced is bringing back Primed and Poreless. They've had that Primed and Poreless powder for quite some some time and now they have repackaged that. I must say I do like this little compact. It's the kind of thing like, I don't know. It's like they actually thought about the fact that people might retouch with this in public and they wanted a really cute little compact for that. Ooh, and there's a film in it that I forgot to peel. Let's just, oh. Yes, you know it's gonna be a good video when it kicks off like that. But the first thing you would use is the primer, and this is the little info sheet on it, and it says it's Primed and Poreless Plus Advanced Formula Pore Banishing and Blurring Face Primer. Instantly reduce shine, blur imperfections, and smooths skin texture. It seems like instead of just touting the pore thing, they're also even giving statistics that pertain to smoothing skin's texture. 91% said it did that. So yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's pop this on. The texture is kind of, I don't know, somewhere between a cream and a gel, actually. That's the way it looks. It's got just a hint of transparency, but sort of a beigey color to it as well. And I'm sort of dotting it around the face and now I'll blend it in. I was wearing this underneath my foundation yesterday too and I did feel like I had really good staying power and I could see the effect on the pores around my nose for sure. But it's very smoothing. It's one of those kind of silky feeling primers as you blend it in. But you do feel evenness in the complexion and that's really, you know, what this is about. You shouldn't put a primer like this on and feel like, oh, I'm tacky and dewy and whatever. This should be a real skin evener if it's gonna be effective at evening out texture. Durr. Um, I just say dirt. Okay, one of those days. Then we're gonna use this Milani Screen Queen foundation. I know this has been out for a bit, but I hadn't used mine yet. Um, this came in PR and it's the Natural Finish Foundation in Warm Shell. It says Digital Blue Light Filter. I feel like I'm just gonna need to look this up real quick because I don't really understand why I need that in a foundation, but maybe they can enlighten me. The blue light coming from your devices could be doing some serious damage. Is it funny that I'm like reading this off of my phone as I needed to get this information? This buildable light to medium coverage foundation blends seamlessly, blurs imperfections, and it has this blue light filter technology to help fight the signs of digital damage. Okay, here's what I'm wondering. What does digital damage look like? They say dullness, discoloration, hyperpigmentation, and it's gonna keep your skin on point no matter matter how much screen time you log. Okay, so we do have a pump with this one. And the shade, I was wearing this the other day, the shade is pretty darn good for me. I did a full pump, which kind of seems like a lot, but let's just go with this. Did I tell you the shade is warm shell that I'm wearing right now? And I did really sense that light to medium coverage with this, but the staying power was really good. And I'm not quite sure if that was my use of this foundation or the foundation paired with the nice primer underneath, but I didn't get oily at all. I didn't get like uh, patchy with my wear on this. I don't know about you guys, when you're kind of assessing how a foundation works, doesn't it take you a few days? Like, the stuff doesn't always wear identically on me every day that I might put it on, and I also might put it through a harsher test on different days. If I'm outside playing with the kids, you know, that's one thing. If I'm mostly in a climate controlled environment, that's another. But are you seeing that real light to medium coverage here? It almost feels like a BB cream type coverage. And I've been using BB creams a lot, lot, lot lately as I've been testing different ones out. And this kind of seems on that level. It's like kind of reminding me of L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow maybe minus a little glow and minus a little coverage as well. But it's got some added benefits, I guess, with the blue light technology. So there you go, there's the screen queen. With that as a concealer, um, I think I'd mentioned briefly in a video that I had gotten this Pat McGrath concealer. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. I wear it in L6. I swear, is this in a glass? Is this an actual glass tube? I mean, I, I swear it is, but I don't think I've ever had a concealer in a glass tube. L6, really good shade. I really like the coverage. I've just, 
I've enjoyed my experience with this concealer. So I'm gonna give myself a couple dots right around here, a little out here, and I'll also brighten up a bit with it. It's like, it's a really good tone for masking stuff, you know? I guess that's what you want a concealer to do, right? But sometimes uh, we err a little bit on the side of too light, and this is like perfect. I'm gonna go for a little smaller brush. This is my Real Techniques. Um, it's the, it comes from a highlighter duo. The coverage is just so nice and even. Around the sides of the nose, chin. It's got all this nice coverage, but for some reason it seems like there's a like a softness and texture. Like if you were to compare it straight up to Tarte Shape Tape, you'd feel like this was a little more hydrating. I just feel like it looks good on me and it wears well too. It doesn't seem to exaggerate like the fine lines and whatnot, so. I think Pat McGrath did really good with that concealer. Let me know your feedback if you've tried this. This has been out for a little while. Next up, let's bounce back to the Primed and Poreless thing. Again, I think they put out this pretty little compact with the mindset of people may be using this like out in public and this looks cute. Um, the packaging of it, you've got your primed and poreless there, which if you're not familiar, this is like a white powder. It's translucent. They do a pretty good job of executing a white translucent powder because when you pick it up on your brush, it sh I, I don't think any white translucent powder should pick up too heavily on a brush, you know? Because if it is, it's probably gonna have a greater tendency of actually showing on the skin and looking white and just not making you look so fresh. So if it's gonna be that way it needs to be kind of a light pickup on the brush but also inside you have a little heart-shaped puff and um, you could use that to dab around for touch-ups. For me today I'm gonna use this um, over my t-zone Again, I achieved really nice staying power with this combo of products the other day, but I'm gonna keep it going today. I'm just using my e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush and I am blotting this around where I want the product. You might say like, why use such a small brush for your powders? But it's putting it exactly where I want it to be. You know, I'm not wanting to be flooded with powder all over the skin. I want it precisely to, you know, gently set my under eye and around my T-zone. And I'm kind of using this pressing motion, which really works well for a brush this size. There are some brushes that are just too darn big to effectively like press something in. Too Faced came out with a new bronzer. They put it in their extravagant large packaging here. We know they've had some highlights like this. Um, this is the Chocolate Diamond Bronzer. So you open it up and it looks like this. Very coppery looking, very metallic seeming. If you were to swatch it, this is the look you get. You know, it has the look of a bronzy metallic eyeshadow really. It has that kind of metallic intensity with some um, little micro fine flecks of sparkle. I do get a little color coming from it, a little more color than I thought, but I do get quite a bit of sheen. I'm a little surprised at the amount of color coming off of this considering I'm, you know, shearing this type of tone out with a large brush, but yet there is still a good amount of pigment coming from it. But as I look closely at my skin, I can really see some of that shimmer, and I just don't know that I love that look so much. I don't know that this is gonna be real effective as a contour. Um, I'm just gonna kind of lightly apply it across the cheeks, I think, actually. I kind of like a satiny finish in a bronzer, you know, something that sort of takes the edge off the mat a little bit and just makes you look real fresh. But here, I don't know that I love the way it looks when I get up really close. I can see that sparkle. Are we liking what it's doing for the tone of my skin? Is it doing much? It's perking me up a little bit. I don't know, gang. I just don't, I don't feel like I really needed this or wanted that kind of a bronzer right now. I just feel like I went over the top practically trying to use these products that would help my texture with the primed and poreless and then I came in with a bronzer with shimmer and now I'm seeing things again. <laughs> For blush, this isn't like a super new product, I don't think, but it's a new to me shade and it's from Laura Mercier and it's the blush color infusion in the shade called Strawberry. Kind of looking like a nice um, matte warm pink. So I'm gonna use some of this. Mmm, that's fresh looking. Liking that shade. I mean, how do people skip blush? Like, look at that cheek versus that cheek. 
I would like to know how interested are you guys in cream and liquid type products like a full face of creams or just trying to integrate that texture more in looks that I do. What do you think? Um, because I kind of, as I've been going through my collection a lot lately, weeding things out, just kind of surveying what I have, I realize I've got quite a few cream products that I just don't use that much and I want to use it more. Oh, that blush is kind of hard to argue with. I like that. I'm going to use my RMS Beauty Living Luminizer. I use this more than I even say. Sometimes if I'm up here and I'm doing stuff and I kind of touch up my makeup, I just pop a little bit of this on. This is that sneaky, but really beautiful. This is the glowing skin. No one would know it was actually highlight kind of thing. Um, it's so, so nice. And it's just a cream texture and you just press it on there and see how it just, mm, a little something, but it doesn't look makeup-y because it just doesn't have that texture and it's not adding more like powder to the skin. Where the Too Faced Chocolate Diamond Bronzer is saying, hey, look at me. This is saying, look at the face and it'll look good. Don't necessarily see the makeup because you just won't with this. It's so sneaky. See that? I like that. I'm trying to perfect though the best way to get it on my forehead because I want it there but I don't want it to be like a patchy thing because it's just such a large surface area. How do I apply this cream highlight to my forehead? Maybe just like I did, I don't know. For eyebrows, um, I did go ahead and use up that whole brow whiz. I was getting to the end of it, that's now done. I found another skinny pencil in my collection. This is the Balm Ferocious, um, you know how they spelled that, dark brown brow pencil. And just a skinny pencil with the spoolie on the other end. I'm gonna give myself a light fill in and then we're gonna use a new brow thing from M Cosmetics. And yesterday I tried that particular product just on its own and it did a pretty good job filling in my brows. I was kind of left thinking, well, I might might have gone over a few spots with a pencil first. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. But I mean, this stuff had color and it had hold and just the way it like went through my brows, it was just clinging on really well. Not the kind of thing you're gonna have to go over and over and over. It was almost like a one pass brow, really interesting. Okay, so just a light bit of pencil I'm gonna brush that on through in case I was uneven in any area. And then this is called the Brow Cream from M Cosmetics and I've got it in the color Brunette. Really slim brush, so that tiny, tiny design there. And then I felt like it, first off, it comes out so cleaned off, not liquidy, not goopy at all. And then just the way it clings into those brow hairs, it just like grabs them. I mean, I'm not really like pressing into my brow hairs super hard, you know, I'm trying to keep a light hand, but the brow like catches it as it goes across. Does that make any sense? Kind of made me feel like I had a nice natural fluffy brow in which I really noticed all the hairs. If you're a person with pretty good natural brows and you just want things to kind of I don't know, stand out a little bit more, be a little more defined, slightly more evened out left to right. This might be a cool product for you to try or for anyone else. It really does have nice hold. I'm gonna consider today if I feel like this is wearing as well as my Almay um, brow styler does. Here's what's next, a totally different eye product. Um, we've got a matte liquid eyeshadow. This is again from Too Faced. Um, they're pumping out quite a few new things right now. Long wear velvety matte melted eyeshadow. It's got Got this chocolate theme. They say it smells like chocolate. Would I say it smelled like chocolate? Yeah, not really like any chocolate bar I'd love to be eating, but maybe a hint of it. But it says two-in-one whipped liquid eyeshadow delivers rich, intense matte color, um, skin-centric cocoa tones, so it's all kind of like a nudes neutral sort of scheme here, um, while doubling as a pigmented primer that locks down for 24 hours of crease-proof, waterproof wear. Um, the looks here, Gosh, I love that kind of a look. I like how it's kind of just blown out, really pretty soft color. Yesterday when I was wearing this, I used the sort of plummy shade. I think they call it chocolate wine. Um, that's the color that's really giving off that sort of a mauve look. It was chocolate wine and tiramisu. <laughs> Those kinds of shades together create that type of look. It wore 
amazingly well. I'm like completely locked in place, no change in the look all day long and no moisture, no like change in the texture, no collecting and creases. It was completely long wear. And I don't think I even had any primer underneath it. Definitely not gonna wear any primer today and see how that goes. Today I'm thinking maybe I wanna go with a little bit of a warmer look because there are several shades in this line that give this kind of a feel. Um, but here's the thing, they're not really like foolproof for application. They're kind of hard to put on. Um, I mean, a little goes a long way and then you decide like, okay, I wanna build it up some, but it can be hard to do that and get a real flawless look. And it, I just come away realizing how many cream and liquid shadows are actually shimmer packed and that kind of makes them more forgiving and a little easier and how rare it is to have like a liquid matte shadow. I do not know what I would do by the way without this duo of Real Techniques brushes. This is the Instapop duo. These are like necessary in my mind for cream and liquid shadows. Now I've been using my Mally shadow sticks quite a bit more lately. She had a big um, TSV promotion on QVC and it just kind of reminded me about those. I like them a lot and I've been using them with these. Now I'm definitely needing these for the liquid shadows. So I like that chocolate wine color a lot. That's really pretty and it's one of the deepest. Um, Tiramisumi is kind of of like, I don't know, hint of lilac in there, but kind of a grayish neutral. There's a shade called Warm and Fudgy, and this would probably be the next darkest to the chocolate wine color. And it's just a neutral brown. Warm shades, we've got Amaretto, we've got Chocolate Chai right here, very orangey with that one. There is a like a light ivory shade called Cocoa Cream. And then kind of in the middle, we've got Chocolate Malt right here and Chocolate Bunny. Chocolate Bunny's a little deeper and a little bit warmer and this might be like that classic crease color a lot of people reach for in a powder format. So goodness, um, where are we gonna go with this? I think I'm gonna start out with Amaretto and it comes out with quite a bit on this little doe foot. So you wanna clean off your applicator a little and I'm going to kind of apply this on the lid not feel like I need to coat the entire lid in product right now, but it'll move a little bit, you see? It doesn't set like on contact, but I wouldn't go like throwing it on both eyes and then waiting around a long time. So see how that Instapot brush, it's got this little like flat foot to it and you can just pat it on, kind of flip it over. It moves the shadow well over a broad surface area. Let's try again on the other eye. Again, these are pigmented. You don't need a lot of product. I felt like I really didn't over apply them yesterday, but I got plenty of color and the staying power was great. I'm wondering if you applied a ton of product, if maybe the staying power wouldn't be as good, but they just were like iron. Okay, but now here's my thing. I look at the picture and I'm like, oh my gosh, I like how the color is like coming up almost to her eyebrow. And then you wanna start adding more and it's the building up of these colors that can be a little bit tricky and that you just don't have the same flexibility you would have with a powder, right? So like I wanna add a little bit more up in here. Uh, wait, I'll wait on the other eye. But it's like then when you start building on top of already setting cream shadow in this formula, you just have to work a little harder. I'm not saying it's impossible, but like you can kind of see, I felt like I could see a little bit yesterday on the edge of my look where I was trying to make more happen. And then actually yesterday I took a powder shadow to try to help me smooth out the outer edge of my look. And it started out as a pretty good solution, but by the end of the day, I think the powder shadow that I was blending my edge with wore off well before, you know, this stuff never wore off. It just, I had to wash it off. But the two things, wearing it in conjunction with your powder, they won't necessarily wear the same. Okay, see, I want that blown out look all the way nearly to the brow. And keep in mind this light shade, Cocoa Cream, if you're looking for something to really cut a clean edge along your brow, like, it'll, that'll do that. That's definitely, like, really opaque. Little goes a long way. I can see a lot of people liking that as a base. But this is all amaretto so far just this one shade that's kind of like in the middle, a mid-tone warm color. So we got that wash all over. Then I wanna intensify it a little bit by taking Chocolate Chai. This really looks like their gingerbread collection. Let's work this in kind of in the outer corner and see how it layers up. Again, with the same brush, I'm using the larger of my two 
Oh, that's looking pretty kind of coming up from the crease like that. Put some on the lid. Almost applied a little too much. Just really using the tip of this brush to get it blended out. That didn't do too bad blending one shade on top of the other. But it is, when they say matte, it is 100% matte. You're not going to find even a little bit of shimmer or sparkle in these. But I don't know what I'd do without these brushes, these Real Techniques brushes with them. They are just godsends when it comes to cream shadow. Not sure how clean that's looking right now. I feel like it's pretty, pretty buffed out. Going back to this picture here, it looks like she's got warmth like going all around here and then like a dark liner or maybe even a little warm and fudgy or something. Maybe darker than that. Maybe there's some chocolate wine even kind of lining the upper lash line. What I'm gonna do is take a little more chocolate chai. I'm gonna actually try to get the bare minimum by going off of the wand and just picking up a little bit there on the tip of my brush and letting that sweep under the eye. My takeaway on these shadows is just like, it creates such a long wearing look. You've got to respect that. Like that's amazing how well these wore and how they were so unchanged all day long. But I don't know that, I think this application takes some getting used to, okay? It's not as easy as powder and powder can give you some really beautiful matte looks. And here you just don't quite feel like you have that same flexibility of just dabbing around a palette, kind of casually throwing the look together. You gotta watch yourself a little bit like, you know, don't just go here and here and then wait and then let something get set. They don't set too fast, but they do set. All right, so I've gone all around the eye. Maybe another thing, yesterday I was using primarily the smaller of these two brushes, and I think this larger one of the Instapop Duo actually gives me a softer, more even look to everything, especially if you're going for this kind of really faded out from the eye type deal. But I will bring in the smaller one for a little chocolate wine, and I'm gonna do this kind of liner style. Just take a little bit off the wand and using the tip of the Instapot brush. So you see how that brush is shaped? I'm using that top tip or the tip top. And I'm just gonna take this along the upper lash line. It's not crazy dark, but it's dark enough to give us a little contrast with the rest. Then I'm gonna take some of my Neutrogena Intense Gel Eyeliner. This is a really easy to use black liner from the drugstore, just retractable. Um, I'm gonna tight line a little bit up in here. Up in here, up in here. Maybe kind of just dot it over top a little bit. I'm sorry, I wasn't wanting like this complicated of an eyeliner look. I should have just maybe started with this. But this is just my E21 smudge brush, just kind of going over that a little bit along the upper lash line. And I'm just dotting a little bit of this here on my lower lash line too, a little bit of this liner. Like you just dab it, it's a pencil, but you dab it, like blot it on. And then I'm gonna use my little smudge brush there. So there is the eye look for my mascara today. I'm gonna try pairing my Milani lash primer, the violet one, with the L'Oreal Bambi Eye and see how we like that. I think the Essence did pretty good with it, but I'm gonna see how this does too. But overall, you know, those Too Faced shadows, they create such a hardcore long wear look and they're not that hard to blend, but just I think obviously harder than powders. So know that going in and you're gonna kind of be ready for what's in store. I think it's the type of thing I could get used to. If you're one who uses a powder palette and you're constantly going back to the shadows and you're making little adjustments and you're adding a little bit here and a little bit there, it's just not that kind of thing because you start adding a little bit of liquid shadow over more liquid shadow, you know, you're gonna stop having a real ease of blending and you can easily go too far. One dab of liquid goes a lot further than a tiny dab of powder. For my lips, I don't know if I've talked about this on camera yet, but I have been playing with it a little bit. It's this Hard Candy Syrup Kiss Lip Stain and I have this in the shade Berry Sweet. And it's an interesting product, it's very thin so it feels cool, kind of like water going on. 
the look is really pretty and you can see how even with the thinness of color that it has, like it definitely has color. I like a berry paired with a bronzy uh, eye. I think that's so pretty. This kind of smells like grapes, like real actual grapes. If you've ever gone out and like been in a vineyard or stomped some grapes actually, like that's kind of an odd real grape smell. It's kind of cool. Okay, then it sits on your lips for a bit becomes a little more one with the lips, you know, like not so thin anymore, which is odd to have that texture change, but it definitely happens. And then you've got this little bit of stain to the lips. I say little bit of stain because I don't feel like the staying power is that great, but it's a really comfortable product on the lips. I'll give it that. It kind of feels texture wise like that Urban Decay um, Vice, you know, that really unusual product where it wouldn't transfer off any color. You know, this transfers off its own color. All right, back to the big Bambi eye mascara here. I repurchased a Lash Paradise and um, a really popular Maybelline mascara that was like, uh, I think it's called Lash Sensational. I know I've used it once before and I love Lash Paradise, but I just kind of picked the top selling ones as I was making my last Walmart pickup order. And I wanted to get a couple of kind of classic well-known mascaras to pair with some of my primers I've been testing. So right now I think I've actually got more primers in my collection than I do regular mascaras. Okay, that one made my lashes a little bit thicker than the uh, Essence one did. So I'd have to say it might be a little bit more dramatic primer. Do I look like the girl in the Too Faced ad yet? <laughs> For my lower lashes, I definitely want a lower lash today because I've got that like liner going on down there. I was just trying to imitate a little bit of that Too Faced look. So did I even say out loud that this is Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions? I'm so like into the look right now. Okay, here's what's gone down. Um, the camera turned off. I needed to empty some stuff off the memory card. And I also spied my set of these pre-permed push-up lashes that I was wearing in my palette tag video. And I was kind of making fun of them a little bit because they're a little bit extreme. But I saw them sitting over here and I thought, what if I gave them a little more of a trim? Like I gave them a tiny trim before I first used them, but I actually gave them an extra trim now off the outside. And I think they're just meshing with my eyes a little bit better here and kind of the shape of this shadow as well. I don't know. They're still a big lash and all, but they're just fitting a little better. I also added a smidge more of that uh, strawberry blush. And yeah, this is my look. What do you guys think? What's the takeaway on these new products? I think a huge takeaway is that this Real Techniques duo of brushes, whatever the cream shadow is you're using, these come in handy. I would say like when I'm swiping on those Mally sticks, there's such a difference between like those which are very low maintenance and you could almost go back forth, back forth, maybe not even really be looking at yourself and be like, okay, I've got a decent look now. Uh, you know, maybe just go over the edge a little bit with one of these. But with these liquid matte shadows, particularly the deeper, more intense shades, you've really got to be watching yourself. The brushes are so important, I think. Um, I did learn today that I think the larger of the two brushes does help with giving just a more buffed out, more even look. If you're going over a large surface area, really trying to spread that color a lot, use the larger of the two, but the smaller one was kind of nice along my lash line. Um, could be nice for outer corner. Smudgy lower lash line perhaps too. But the shades I have liked the best out of this line from Too Faced, I really liked Amaretto. I mean, that looked pretty on its own all over and could have we could have stopped there, but I I thought chocolate chai really took it up a notch if you like warm looks like that really went there and I feel like those would have to be maybe a couple of the shades that she was wearing in this look do you maybe think but also chocolate wine I think that's a unique color it's a little more difficult to work with because it is so dark but it makes a really pretty look and it actually fades like pretty on the eyes. If you saw the picture of the look I posted from yesterday, that was really nice. Those would probably be my three favorite shades. And the brush is the real MVP. The Primed and Poreless Primer and also that powder, I also feel pretty good about. I don't even see pores, you know, like on my nose area, sides of the nose, everything's looking so fresh. I'm not really a fan of this bronzer. The foundation is very middle of the road in terms of 
light coverage, almost seeming like BB cream level. I kind of prefer the look of L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow, but I think it's on that level in terms of lightweight kind of natural looking foundation. This doesn't have quite as much glow to it though. But I'm going to keep my eye on it and I'm also going to continue to work with that without this primer underneath to see if it wears anywhere near as well or kind of to determine what was so responsible for good staying power that I've had. And the lip, fun, nice scent, um, interesting texture. It again goes on super thin. It thickens up a little bit as you wear it. I do think it's doing some level of staining, but not like a really hardcore all day look on my lips. But thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I've been told I need to remind people of this. I would really appreciate it and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Hey everyone, I thought I would hop on here and do a little staying power check-in. It's been between seven and eight hours, and I feel like things are looking pretty good. Um, just looking at my skin, I don't feel overly shiny. The coverage still seems even, and again, not sure exactly whether we can credit the primer and the powder, or just the foundation, but this is my second day using that stuff, and it has worn well together. And then um, on my eyes, I think everything is hanging on there quite well. Again, I think those shadows just lock in very nicely. No complaints on the wear with that. The lip is pretty much worn down, but I thought I'd just give you a sense of what it's looking like about halfway through my day. Just checking in at the um, 12 hour mark, and I feel like everything, overall evenness is good. I am seeing a bit of shine on the forehead and the nose, and looking back at the last video clip, I was actually seeing some shine there too, but I know I've been like, in. I've caught myself several times leaning my hand on my forehead so that always messes with things but the nose has definitely gotten a little shiny as the um, afternoon has rolled on it's kind of humid outside we've been outside but the eye look is still going strong my friends so I have nothing but good things to report on how those wear very impressed and yeah thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon bye